Discuss the role that ozone can play in cancer treatment. How do you use that? Now, ozone is an, accident, is an oxidant. Okay, so really, when you look the difference between oxidation and reduction, okay, so you have to have, in order to, you have to burn the disease, if you will, or you have to burn the food you eat. And when we look, at, technically, I don't know how to tell you, there is a ratio of NAD to NADH. And it is the oxygen ADH is a, is, a, is a reductant. So you have to have a ratio of 700 to 1 in order to burn the disease or to move, move things forward. Now, ozone has the capability of using fatty acids to make a lot of ATP to do this. So that's number one. Number two, it, it's also it's anti-inflammatory. Also, it, uh, it helps with lymphatic drainage. Really, it's a... I would say uh, medical grade ozone. You have to be careful with this because ozone has a bad name because many people misunderstand ozone. Mm -hmm. Now, if you if you look at the atmospheric ozone, that they, they, the way they reported in, in the weather, uh, ozone is very high. You're going to get sick. It's not so when ozone re is very reactive, it takes three milliseconds to react, and and it creates ozonides. Ozonides are byproducts of ozone. Now, you have good ozonides and bad ozonides, okay? The bad ozonides, sulfur dioxides and other things that mix with ozone, very toxic to the human body. However, when you, when you, when you mix medical grade ozone, which you start with 100% oxygen, and it reacts with the blood, then you don't have that problem. So the ozonides that you create are very, very beneficial. Uh, you create... Um, uh, special kind of uh, ozonides that support the immune system, kill the infections, because infection is a huge issue. And if you go back in, in, in history, before 1966, it was well known that cancer also has an infectious component. And after 1966, somehow, they left the literature. I don't know why, but it did. But the bugs didn't go away. Just because it's not reported in the literature, it doesn't mean that's not there. For example, we know, you know, we talk about the Zika virus that killed so many people, so many billions of dollars. Well, this all nonsense to me. Yes, yes, you have to do it. Yes, you need the vaccines and all that. I agree with that research. But if we're forgetting that 4.5 plus billion people with a B, people a year have parasitic infections. So nobody's talking about that because we can't culture them. They're very difficult to culture the parasites. And they're not in the digestive tract. Most of them are outside of the digestive tract. The other funny thing about the, 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 the infections, the parasitic infections, and don't ask, I don't know why, parasites have evolved the same, fungi and parasites and humans have evolved in the same level of evolution right now, okay? okay. And parasites follow the civilization. It doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. You would think in, in, in what we're sitting right here in LA is probably much cleaner than the, the jungles of Central America? I don't think so. That's not, that's not what we know. So uh, can, we, uh, can we identify the parasites with traditional means? No. You have to use acupuncture evaluation to see uh, that this is so. And then when you're using the science of acupuncture to identify these parasites, you can't culture them traditionally. I mean, unless they're in the digestive tract. So we know they exist. The, the World Organization says they exist. But our American thinking uh, doesn't exist. They don't exist. Or they're very rare. They're more common than we think.